All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 37, The Scare of the Bull and the Step Pyramid. So in today's episode, I will be discussing the esoteric interpretation of the scarab and bull symbols as related to the function of the Step Pyramid of Saqqara. And this is one of my favorite propositions that I made within the Land of Chem book, that these three things are indeed connected. So these two symbols, the scarab and the bull, are esoteric symbols that have been incorporated within the dynastic Egyptian religion and attributed with a rather superficial significance that was intended for the consumption of the general public. However, and as with all great esoteric symbols, these have a much deeper interpretation, which in this case is related directly to the industrial scale production of methane gas inside of the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara. And this interpretation was only intended for those who had been initiated into the sacred mysteries of ancient chemistry. In today's episode, I will also be presenting a brand new animation that demonstrates the function of the Steppe Pyramid. Thank you so much to Wally for helping me put this animation together. Wally is the gentleman that assisted in developing the animation of the Red Pyramid, and I really hope you enjoy this new one showing the Step Pyramid in operation. And I'll be concluding today's episode with a discussion of the ultimate goal that I have for my research here on the Land of Chem. For anyone that wants to help support the channel, limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. Also, brand new merch is finally available on the website. I am currently wearing the brand new fifth degree logo, which is a raw image of the central pyramid of Giza featuring the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid. I am absolutely thrilled with how these new t-shirt prints came out and they are super comfortable. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to the website again, www.thelandofchem.com, pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. All the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So I will simply say, thank you. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So let's take a journey back to circa 7,000 BC when the Egyptian pyramids are fully operational. So if you're not fully brought up to speed regarding the date that I have proposed for the construction and operation of the Egyptian pyramids, I highly recommend you check out episode 25, the timeline of the Egyptian pyramids here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel, and then circle back to tonight's episode. So we are discussing a time period that is 3,000 years after the cataclysm at the end of the last ice age and the survivors of this catastrophe have encapsulated the cumulative knowledge of this ancient civilization into giant pyramidal infrastructure projects that were designed to implement the science of chemistry to assist the civilization in re-establishing itself around the Nile River. And one of the main objections to my theory about the function of the red and bent pyramids of Dashur making fertilizers is that this civilization wouldn't need fertilizer because the soil around the Nile River was so good. Well, during the time period in which these structures were operational, you can clearly see that the farmlands in the upper eastern Saharan region were not confined to the area of the Nile River. They were spread out across this entire area. So the fertilizers that were being produced inside of the red and bent pyramids of Dashur were not being utilized only in the region around the Nile River, but those fertilizers were being distributed across the upper eastern Saharan region to fertilize and sustain the crop development across this entire region. And just because you have good soil, that doesn't mean you wouldn't also want to implement fertilizer to further sustain the crops and increase your inevitable yield. Also, during this time period, the entire civilization was predicated upon the proliferation of domesticated cattle, which directly connects to the scarab and the bull symbols and the production of methane gas within the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara. 
So this entire region within the Upper Eastern Sahara was completely farmland. This entire area was dedicated to growing crops and raising cattle to sustain the burgeoning agricultural and industrial civilization that was developing in this area. So of course, we see the bull and the cow prominently represented in the symbolism of the ancient religions across the planet. And the cow or the bull is mostly associated as a solar deity connected to the constellation Taurus. However, this is only a superficial interpretation, scratching only the surface of what this symbol truly represents. So the astrological interpretation of this symbol was intended for the comprehension of the general public within this religious context. However, the initiates of this ancient chemistry would have understood that cattle manure being essential to methane gas production was the original justification for the deification of these animals. The process of extracting methane, a mysterious and powerful chemical from cattle manure, could have certainly led to the attribution of godlike qualities to these already revered creatures. And if the ancient civilization that built the Steppe Pyramid were really utilizing the structure for the industrial scale production of methane gas, what is the first step in that production process? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the first step is collecting the dung, and that is exactly what we see represented in the esoteric symbol of the scarab. These are practical symbols whose oldest and deepest interpretation is connected to the science of ancient chemistry. However, they have become veiled and misunderstood under the context of religious allegory as they were incorporated into this religion of the dynastic Egyptians. So, these dynastic Egyptians, or rather the conventional interpretation of their hieroglyphs, say that the scarab was a symbol of the solar cycle, the rising and setting of the sun, and the scarab, or the god Kepri, pushed the sun across the sky every day. So the scarab is also seen as a symbol of rebirth, resurrection, and eternal life. All of these are also utilized as solar symbols within all of our modern religions. However, the suggestion that a desert cockroach pushing around a ball of feces somehow represents the glorious golden sun never made any sense to me whatsoever. This is a practical symbol that represents the first stage of the chemical production process, which is collection of the cattle manure. This symbol means exactly what it shows. Just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of the Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. Also, brand new merch is finally available on the website. There's the new fifth degree logo, the raw image of the central pyramid featuring the alchemical symbol for hydrochloric acid in the exclusive violet print, as well as the white and black logos. There's also the OG second degree t-shirts, the original Ashur featuring molecular ammonia inside of the structure. If you want to help support the channel, just go to the website, www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a t-shirt. Either way, all these orders mean the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is an exceptional image of what I imagine was occurring in the farmlands that were supplying the raw materials to the Steppe Pyramid Complex. So you would have had harvesting of your agricultural scrap material. There would have been collection of the cattle manure, and there would have been inland canals that were utilized to deliver the raw materials directly to the Steppe Pyramid Complex. And here is another exceptional depiction of the area in Saqqara and the Steppe Pyramid Complex. And you can see here that there is a huge area of farmland located to the eastern side of the Steppe Pyramid Complex. And I'm certainly not opposed to the idea that this entire area of farmland could have been specifically allocated for the production of the raw materials that were being sent in those inland canals directly to the Steppe Pyramid Complex for processing. So now, ladies and gentlemen, and without further ado, here is this brand new animation produced by my friend Wally and his tech guy in India that demonstrates my theory for the function of the Steppe Pyramid of Saqqara, which is that the main chamber inside of this structure functioned as a primary digestion chamber 
for the production of methane gas. So please keep in mind that there are some limitations, let's say, to the software that are used to create these animations. This is not an accurate depiction of the physics or the chemistry, and we saw that exact same thing in the animation of the Red Pyramid. These animations are intended for illustration and entertainment purposes only, and they're really intended just to help demonstrate the concept and to bring the ideas that I wrote within the book to life. And in that regard, I do think that this animation was a great success. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> All right, so now that you've seen the animation demonstrating the concept for my theory of the function of the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, let's move forward to the ultimate goal that I have always had for the research here on the land of Chem. So back in 2017, prior to my first trip to Egypt, I was actively investigating the Egyptian pyramids and the proposed function thereof. And I just happened to be working for an IT company at the time. And I got assigned to a project that involved a software program called Comsol Multiphysics. And what you can see here are screenshots taken from this multiphysics modeling program. And this is a CAD-based software program that can be used to test and model various parameters within a given system. So you can do fluid dynamics, you can do acoustic pressure, you can do heat distribution, chemical reactions, tensile strength, current flow, and the list goes on and on and on and on. So I knew as soon as I saw the capabilities of this program that something like this could be the ultimate way to demonstrate and prove the function of the Egyptian pyramids. So someone could take a highly accurate 3D CAD model of any of these structures, upload it into the program, set the parameters, and let the system run to see what happens. And we could get some results like this. Hey, SPCC. By opening the surface node, changing the expression to C underscore V in a looking plot. We can see the concentration of species P. We then do the same for species C in the other concentration. As you can see, the concentration of species C in the porous media is not evenly distributed. This suggests the injection needle is placed too close to the reacting bed, which doesn't allow proper mixing of species A and species B. All right, so here on this slide, you can see several real life physics and chemistry accurate models that were generated using this Comsol multiphysics program. And you can see here on the top left, this is a spark plug, and you can see the heat distribution in the metal cylinder being modeled by this program. Here on the right, this is heated airflow moving through this cylinder. 
This one here is a model of fluid dynamics within a spinning turbine. This one here is very, very cool and certainly applicable to the Egyptian pyramids, which are acoustic pressure dynamics within this circular room. This one here shows magnetic current flow, and this one here is called a photonic crystal. So very, very interesting capabilities of this software program, which would absolutely be applicable to testing the function of the Egyptian pyramids. So back in 2017, I had actually discussed the potential implementation of this ComSol multi-physics modeling software to test the theories that were contained within my book, The Land of Chem, regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids. And the software engineers at ComSol were extremely excited about the proposition of using this software to test a proposed function of the Egyptian pyramids. However, they were a little bit dubious of the capabilities of the software program itself because there are some limitations with the parameters that are set up within that system. So anyway, long story short, the project that I was working on never ended up moving forward, and the IT company that I was working with at the time was completely shut down. But I always kept this type of software program in mind as the ultimate goal for my research here on the Land of Chem project, which is not just to make animations of my theory, but to actually test the physics and the chemistry that are proposed within the Land of Chem book in a software program that can produce real life results. And I have no doubt that if someone actually did this and revealed the true capabilities of these structures, it would surpass anything we could possibly imagine. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 37, the scarab, the bull, and the step pyramid. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and I have some absolutely amazing content coming out for the next several episodes here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. We have the construction of the Great Pyramid, the function of the Bent Pyramid's satellite hydraulic press mechanism, more connections between ancient Ireland and Egypt, and the list goes on. A huge thank you to all of the supporters of the Land of Chem. Your positivity and encouragement mean the world to me, and I do this for you. If you want to help support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a copy of the book, grab yourself a new Land of Chem 5th degree t-shirt. To all of the viewers, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification bell so that you get noticed whenever these videos premiere. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or any suggestions for future videos, please leave that in the comment section below. I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time.